For today's video, we're going to take a look at sensitivity analysis. It has everything to do with that cost, volume, profit we've been talking about. So we're going to look at how changes in the variables of cost, volume, profit cause our, any change in our break-even analysis. To do that, what we need to remember, first of all, the formula for our contribution mark margin income statement and what takes us down to break-even. We start with our sales price, we subtract out our variable costs, and the difference between those is our contribution margin. From there, that contribution margin goes to cover our fixed costs, and as long as we cover our fixed costs, we at least get to zero and break even. If we're above it, we've got profit, and that's what we're really looking for in this whole game. So first things first, a fixed cost change. A fixed cost change, as you'll note, they will change the break even, but it will not change the contribution margin. If you take a look up at the uh, formula up here again, you'll see fixed costs are below contribution margin. They have no impact on contribution margin. So they will not change, even if uh, contribution margin, even if a fixed cost change. However, the break-even will change. Why? Because your fixed cost divided by your contribution margin will change your break-even point in units. Your fixed costs go up, then your break-even point goes up. How about if our variable costs change? If all of a sudden our costs go from one to two, or or somewhere along the line, uh, then we're going to have a couple other impacts. If our sales price changes, uh, our sales price, excuse me, stays the same, then our break-even point in units will increase simply because our contribution margin will be, will be going down. So there you go. There's that break, increase in break-even. And why? Well, because sales price, subtracting an increased uh, variable cost, will give you a decreased contribution margin. I'll give some numerical examples here in a sec. Again, we just need to start recognizing how these changes impact each other. If the sales price increases, I think you can pretty much guess how that's going to impact it. The sales price goes up, the contribution margin goes up, and if our contribution margin goes up, then our break-even point in units will end up going down because we'll be getting more contribution margin for each and every unit we sell. Taxes will impact only if we have uh, after-tax profits that we're trying to hit on. If we're not trying to hit on any profits, if we're just using break-even, then there will be no impact at all. Uh, but of course, uh, if there is an after-tax profit, then there will be an impact. It will just change the number of units we need to reach that, that after-tax profit. The reason it doesn't change break-even is because at break-even we've got a zero dollar income and taxes are always based upon income. So zero dollars of income times whatever percentage, I'm sure you learned this a long time ago, equals zero. So the rule of one, one thing I want you to always think of when you get a problem like this is well, what if I change one thing by a single dollar? So, again, we take a look at our formula. And the original that I'm going to use, I'm going to say we sell each unit for $1. So we've got 10 units. We're selling each for $1. I want to use nice and easy math. Because if I'm ever encountering one of these problems on a test or later on in life, uh, if I use simple math, it will remind me where everything's going. So we're selling 10 units. Uh, variable cost, we're going to go with 40 cents each. So that way it's $4 total. Contribution margin per unit, you can see, is $0.60. Cents. And we're going to go with fixed costs of equal to $6. So we start at break even. Well, if I'm going to increase my fixed costs, we can see what do we need to do. Well, our sales are still $10. Our variable costs are still $4. Our contribution margin is still $6. But $6 minus the $7 of fixed costs won't help us break even. So in order for us to break even, we need to sell more units. So again, our contribution margin, or our break-even point in units, went up. How about if I increase my variable costs? Well, we start with, again, the $10 sales price. Now we change the variable cost by $1. And we're going to subtract the $5 variable cost. We've got a $5 contribution margin. What must we do to break even? We must sell more units. So our break-even point in units has changed again. And now our contribution margin has also changed. Lastly, if we increase that sales price by $1, so our sales go from $10 to $1, uh, then our variable cost of $4, our contribution margin went up. So if we're going to break even with that increased sales, as long as we can sell the same number of units, we're there. We've made it. We don't have to do anything else. So that's the rule of one. If you ever encounter a problem like this, just try it. Just change the number by $1 and see how it works and see how it plays out and how it impacts the other numbers in there in the analysis.
Now the big question to answer, what if two change at once? And we'll start to break that down more in class time. But I wanted you to get a second, take a look and learn what this rule of one is. I really believe it's a great study habit. Even if you don't use it much in here, you might use it sometime in college.